uh, Washington court says dormant commerce clause doesn't apply to pot. Okay. And it seems that uh, Washington, state of Washington in 2020 started a, a social equity program and they put a six month residency requirement on uh, applications. So uh, a guy from I think Michigan or Michigan, someplace out of state who've met all the qualifications that residency applied and he was told, nope, you don't meet the qualifications, so you don't get to take your application forward. Mm -hmm. And so he sued in federal court, which may or may not be a, a problem for him. Uh, but hey, and I haven't seen the complaint. But what I'm assuming they did is they is they filed for a writ of mandamus to order the state to do something and a declaratory relief to declare that what they're doing is unconstitutional. Blah blah blah. But they ran in right away four days after they filed this complaint for a temporary restraining order, and the judge in an oral motion from or oral order from the bench said, "No, you're not getting a TRO on this." So then they had a hearing on a permanent injunction. And they wanted to permanently enjoin the state from enforcing this residency requirement. And this uh, this judge took a look across the country and noted that in Maine there was a federal decision. It was split. It decided the dormant commerce clause applies to these um, racially discriminatory laws. Um, and it also noted that in Cal that in the Ninth Circuit out here on the West Coast <clears throat> that there was a decision where the judge said, "Hang on, the you know the." Congress made an affirmative decision here about cannabis in 1970, and it's illegal. So there is no commerce in cannabis. And they struck down, uh, or they, they threw them out of court, said, no, the Dormant Commerce Clause doesn't apply. And the Dormant Commerce Clause basically applies when the federal government has not taken any action to pass the law on the Commerce Clause. And that's where this begins to get real interesting. As this judge said, no, nah, the Dormant Commerce Clause doesn't apply here because Congress, under its Commerce Clause authority, has passed an affirmative law that says there is no legal commerce in cannabis, period, in the discussion. So they shut the courthouse door on them. And I expect this is going to go up the chain to uh, uh, the Ninth Circuit here, where we're going to get some sort of a decision. Um, and this is complicated, and I think I mentioned this before, that I think Clarence Thomas and perhaps this new conservative majority on the bench is going to throw out some of these Commerce Clause cases. And the one I'm specifically talking about is Gonzalez versus Rach. And I don't know if you remember that, but in 2005, the DEA was waiting for that decision to arrest me. And when the court decided that Angel Rach can't grow weed in her backyard and use it in her own house because of this 1941 decision called Wickard versus Filburn, where the court swung really heavily on the side of giving the federal government commerce authority over every goddamn part of your life. And it's disgusting. And I don't think that the Commerce Clause covers, you go into a 7-Eleven on the highway, uh, it, it just shouldn't cover that. But what we've got here is a set stage for the, an appellate court to decide, does the Dormant Commerce Clause even apply here when this is federally illegal? And what I'm seeing here, and maybe it's just wishful thinking, is a pendulum swing away from giving the federal government Commerce Clause authority and reining it back in. The, informative, the, uh, the Obamacare case put a line in the sand said, no, Commerce Clause doesn't give you the authority to charge somebody some fee or require them to, to take out health insurance. And they said, no, you've gone too far with that. And I would like to see the court say that if you're going to do something in your own personal world uh, that does, isn't, com isn't commercial and isn't leaving the state, that the federal government has no authority over you. So and stand by and stand back and let's see what happens with this because I expect this to be appealed. We now have splits in these jurisdictions about how to apply the Dormant Commerce Clause in what is a facially discriminatory statute, a state law. If you've got to live there for six months, that's a facial discrimination against interstate commerce. And we'll see if they're gonna allow it, and then if they're gonna allow it, what rules are gonna to apply um, to you know, scrutinizing these state laws. 
Oh, this is an ongoing discussion we'll have again as this rolls out because social equity, and you know, Rico, we've talked about this before, social equity depends on the federal government mm -hmm. upholding these local rights to give preference to people who have been to prison, who were socially disadvantaged, had family members go to prison. Luke and I both understand this. I mean, prison is not fun. And if you could get some advantage after going to prison, you know, I think we should help people out like that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna throw it back at you for some discussions. What do you guys think about this? Oh. There's a whole lot of mess. Yes. This is a storm is brewing. Storm is, is. ruined. So, 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 so they're saying they're saying that because cannabis is federally illegal, Dale, that that's why it doesn't count as part of the dormers commerce com, dormant commerce clause. Well, the the dormant commerce clause only comes into effect when the federal government hasn't taken action. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the state cannot put up protectionist measures if the federal government hasn't stepped in. Once the federal government steps in, then they have. Um, they're peremptory. They, they have plenary power. The, the state can't come in and, and legislate when the federal government has exercised a Commerce Clause power. But that's where the pissing match starts. How far do they get to go with Commerce Clause power? And I, I'm, I'm suspecting that if it's thrown to the Supreme Court, that they're not, they're not going to uphold the rage case. They're going to throw some of this stuff out. No, Clarence Thomas has been gunning for that rage case since he got in there, um, because the what the the, the the things that were going on during rates aren't going on now. The, mm -hmm. the things that made the decision in the rates case aren't necessarily the same ways in, 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 in essence of the way it was completely federally illegal, not accepted anywhere. We didn't have any coal memos. We didn't have any Ogden memos. We didn't have any appropriations amendments or any, any of those things going on. I mean, this Commerce Clause is really the basis for federal prohibition of cannabis. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we, I can like emphasize how important the Commerce Clause affects the cannabis industry. That is how, that is why Dale and I, when we went into court, we couldn't present a medical cannabis defense. We yep. couldn't talk about That's California correct. law. We couldn't talk about paying our taxes. No, nope. we couldn't talk about any of the things that we did legally in the state because it didn't matter. Because the Commerce, once the Commerce Clause is invoked. Even if all of the cannabis was grown, sold, and consumed within the borders of California, this ridiculous Commerce Clause says, because theoretically there could be a black market in California that could affect a black market in another state. Remember, I said could affect a black market in yeah. another state. Mm -hmm. That therefore they can invoke these these commerce clause. Now you are basically talking about a market that you're not even supposed to be recognizing. Number one, and then you're saying in theory it could affect it, and that's how you're sending people to prison. Mm -hmm. Bullshit. I'm I, I'm with mm -hmm. you, Luke. And uh, we we actually found a really great picture of Clarence Thomas, and uh, I want to see what you guys have to think about this because we're hoping he can be the savior. Was he, was, he, was he in a luxury RV? Take a look. Oh, take, a look. Yeah. take a look. Take a look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there we yeah, go yeah. yes clarence wood oh, thomas man. yeah shout out to judge thomas yeah well is, Har is harlan see. is harlan crow uh, behind him underneath the covers bro hold on bro did you did you did you see <laughs> that tattoo did you see, that tattoo? Right did you see the tattoo on his stomach though did you see the tattoo on it he got he got he got, I saw that. He got rbg <laughs> tattooed on his on his belly oh, oh my God. i didn't know i didn't know uh but so guys, this is hanging like that. I don't know. He looked like where Clarence Thomas do time at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, got a, he, got a he did, he did all his time on the hill, this, bro. This pendulum, swing, this pendulum swing goes way, way back to FDR's time when he threatened to pack the court. And we had one of the justices flip. Mm -hmm. and yep. and decide that we're going to expand commerce power. And the Wickard versus Filburn case was growing wheat for his own cattle. And they said, no, no, you can't do that because we have a comprehensive federal scheme to control agriculture. We're not going to let you do it. And Thomas, when he, in the rage case, he said, what's the 10th Amendment a dead letter? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. All the power rests with the state unless you specifically give it to the federal government. And he had a lot of problems with that. And he's he's a set stage, and I think we've got enough justices right now to say no, 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 no. I, you I, don't I get to stay. There's no comprehensive scheme now. After the Cole memo, the um, right now we have the McClintock Blumenauer iteration yep. of, you know, spending preclusions. There's no comprehensive scheme. I think that they will throw the entire thing out 
and now cannabis won't be in the Controlled Substances Act. Mm -hmm. Thank God. And that's probably the best thing we're going to get because then Congress has to do something, get their thumb out of their ass and stop fighting over dumb shit and figure out what to do about this. So I'm hoping the court decides this because the politicians just can't. They've got rectal myopia and have for years. They don't want to do anything about this. Rectal myopia. Man, I'm going to have to we're going to have to ask Dr. T what that is on Friday. 